on this podcast and many others um, where men investigate the various dating phenomena between men and women, that women seem to not care very much about the body count of men and men seem to care very much about the body count of women. They view it very differently. But aren't you making kind of the greatest case for that in the world that here you are with a zero body count and your statement is, I don't give a shit about the body count of the man. In fact, I would prefer that he had some bodies under his belt so he knew what he was doing. Yeah, that's totally fair. Um, I do think a lot of the time when you're a virgin, people would assume that you would also want to be with another virgin. Um, I think that's a fair assumption to make. But yeah, personally, I, I don't want to be. Um, so I'm mm -hmm. single. Um, I've never been in a relationship, and that's, uh, that's about it. <laughs> you want to elaborate? Yes. Well, um, I, I feel like my teens and 20s, I just like wasn't ready to date anyone. Um, it really just wasn't a priority for me. I feel like I was just, I don't know, living my life, and um, it just wasn't something that I was super interested in, honestly. Um, and then I also feel like I, on top of that, I don't experience attraction that often, so that also made it easy for me to avoid dating. Do you want to elaborate? Mm -hmm. And I am a virgin at 34 years old. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and there was, there was a uh, New York Post article about this. Nick, could you pull it up? We're going to get the New York Post article. I'm going to have you read it. If you can, can you see the screen? You want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. I'm a 33-year-old virgin who is not religious. This is why I've never had sex. That's not a direct quote, but that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to keep reading it? Yeah, please. Yeah, okay. A 33-year-old virgin says there's nothing wrong with being a late bloomer and insists it's quite common for millennials to have never done the deed. Also not a direct quote, but yes. Uh, Lauren Harkins made the claim in an interview with Southwest News Service, revealing religion wasn't the reason why she's remained chaste. I'm a virgin, but I'm not traditional. Usually it's one or the other, but I'm just very content on my own, the Portland, Maine resident stated. That is true. Thank you, JJ. Okay. Um, so um, have you been on a date? I've never been on a date, no. Um, not even a date? I haven't because I... I'm very all or nothing, so I'm not gonna go on a date with someone that I'm not interested in. I'm not gonna waste anyone's time. Mm. I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm not gonna waste. I'm not gonna lead anyone on um, just to get a free meal. So no, I've never been on a date. Okay. With anyone. Have you been asked out on dates? I have. Okay. Yes. Have. Mm -hmm. How many times have you been asked out? I don't know. I mean, asked out or like approached. I feel like asked out is kind of like next level. I feel like I've been approached more than I've been technically asked out um, a lot of times. Hundreds. Hundreds? Probably over the years. And you rejected yeah. them all? Yeah. I mean, like a, a friendly way. I'm a friendly sure. gal, but yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, none of them. And was it lack of physical attraction, lack of I mean, for me, it's everything. It's like, it's, it's lack of physical attraction, but I think, I think it's also, uh, it's something that you just feel. If I feel someone is not for me, again, I'm not going to waste anyone's time. I personally do think that there has to be that, mm -hmm. that feeling there. Um, I think it's honestly the same with like friends. Like I know who I like, who I want to be friends with. It's just, it's, it's like who you jive with in that way. So it's not just, you know, for romantic relationships for me, I'm just very intentional with who I surround myself with. Have you ever felt that? With a man? Yeah. No. I mean, no, I've never, no, no one that I've met, I've felt that for. Have you ever been physically <laughs> attracted to a man? Yeah, I feel like I... I'm getting there. I feel like I've, to some extent, but also I feel like that, again, that emotional connection has to be there. So nothing specific that I can say. But um, hmm. have you ever? And um, do you, I'm just, just curious, um, 
and, and maybe this sounds a little off. You don't have to ask it or answer if you don't want to, but do you suffer from any forms of uh, mental illness by chance? <laughs> What's up, Andrew? Um, I don't What's actually. Up? I don't. I'm actually, um, I think I'm a pretty healthy girl. I, I don't have any, um, I'm pretty fortunate. I don't have any mental illness to speak of. I don't have any um, trauma to speak of. Very limited baggage. Uh, very... Well Look, can I qualify to you why I asked the question? Because course, I know that yeah. it seems a little off, right? Absolutely. Especially for somebody who promotes the virtue of chastity in society. Of course. I The reason that I promote, though, the virtue of chastity in society is because it's a virtue. If somebody is angling for the virtuous end, I think that that end is good, right? So mm -hmm. they're angling for it for virtue. But that does not appear to actually be what you're doing. It appears that it has nothing to do with virtue. You just... Uh, don't find men to be particularly attractive and so you don't sleep with them, right? That's fair. I think it's also I think it's also both. I mean, I'm not religious, so I don't know if I would personally use the word virtue, but I do understand what you're saying. I think um, for me, it's yes, I don't experience attraction, but even if I did, I still think it's so important to be intentional about who you share your body with. I think it's important to be intentional about everything, honestly. Again, who you surround yourself with. Um, so I'm yeah, but you have no higher reason that you're appealing to for that. You just, it's just like, kind of an innate set of preferences that you have. Yeah, that's um, fair. So I wonder if these aren't just post hoc justifications for the fact that you're just not particularly attracted to men. And so you kind of justify these things by saying, well, I think that it's important. The reason that I'm not is because of X, Y, Z. It's like a justification for, uh, you know, for this factor. Now, I'm not, I'm not beating up on you. I'm just genuinely curious because it's rare that you run into a secularist who is a uh, virgin because, of course, uh, generally speaking, people pursue that because it's some kind of virtue. So I'm just wondering, since it's not a virtue, is this just a post hoc justification for, well, I'm just kind of like a social weirdo, right? <laughs> I understand does that, what you're does saying. that make sense? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. Um, yeah. I don't take offense to that. I, I understand what you're saying. I do think, though, for me, it is both. Um, even if I was attracted to men at the same rate as, you know, other girls, I think I would still be just very selective with who I share my body with. I do think that that's important. So, um, no, I don't think it's just uh, you know a post hoc argument that I'm trying to make. But I respect your opinion. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm, again, I'm not. I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm actually just trying to kind of understand uh, the worldview because there's no. There, there doesn't seem to be anything higher you're angling towards for this, right? So it's not in and of itself virtuous that you're pursuing the retention of your virginity because that's not why you're pursuing it, but rather because you just don't have any interest in having sex with men, essentially, is what I'm hearing. Okay. I mean, is that about correct? No, that, that is correct. I mean, what would okay. you say, like for you, what would you say is, is your position as far as the virtue is concerned so that I can understand where you're coming from? Well, so uh, generally, especially in modernity, a good sign of female virtue is um, the intact chastity. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, especially because that's under assault constantly, you'll note that women will often lose their virginity and then go and tell their friends they should do the same thing, right? It's like once the thing is gone, they almost want to kind of lead a train of women to uh, also lose that virtue as well. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that Often, from the religious angle, there's kind of a, a higher value here of chastity if I'm holding out for the right person because I'm pursuing the virtue of what it is to be chaste. Rather, but this is a different thing altogether. This is not I'm holding out for the virtue of the thing or because I have some command that I'm following which is higher than me, but rather I, I just don't like I'm just not attracted to men, so I don't want to have sex with them, right? So it just seems like a right. it's a totally different kind of angle that I'm not used to hearing. So I I wanted to kind of dive into it a little bit. Yeah, of course. No, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would say yeah, for so me... So I found it peculiar, right? And I'm going to bring this up, too, because I found it peculiar that there was an article uh, run on this. And I think that if it had been a Christian woman who had kept her uh, chastity intact... No such article would have been written that nobody would have given a shit. But because you're coming at it from a secular angle, I think that they were more curious about it. So yeah. that's why I'm curious about it. Right? Yeah, totally. I understand, like, the... I feel like I am kind of uh, in a league of my own with this one. I know it is, but usually it's one or the other. It's You're either very traditional and, you know, saving yourself for a husband and 
I think that's great. Or it's, you know, you're... Yeah, but why is why do you think that's great? I think it's great. Well, so for me, I mean, I think it's great, again, to be intentional who you share your body with. And I think it's great to... Um, but I mean, isn't a prostitute intentional about who she's sharing her body with? Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's a good point. I think, well, I think just for me, like, I don't, that just, that lifestyle just does not appeal to me. That modern right. lifestyle. Just, uh, well, that I can agree with, right? Yeah. The lifestyle just doesn't appeal to you. I yeah. understand that, but yeah. see what I mean by like the post hoc justification? Yeah, when I you say you. things that are kind of empty, like, I think that you should be very conscientious of who you share your body with. Mm -hmm. I'm not confident that, you know, like working girls are not sure who they're sharing their body with, right? So this is, this is why I, I don't want there to be any confusion uh, that there's some, some type of like, um, like virtue which is being pursued here uh, because that's not what's going on. And so I wanted to dive into why is this actually being pursued? Because it seems almost maladjusted in a way, right? Okay. Um, I think, I get you. I understand what you're saying. I think for me, it's just, I operate based on what feels right for me. So mm -hmm. societally speaking, like, yes, it's very unconventional. It's a very unconventional path. I'm not trying to be a virgin forever. I'm not trying to like promote this lifestyle of, of everyone should be a virgin in their 30s. But basically what I'm saying is like, it's okay to be on your own timeline and to, to kind of step outside of that, you know, assume, the assumed way that it should be. Mm -hmm. I think like for me, if something doesn't feel right, I'm not going to do it. I, if, if someone doesn't feel right for me, I'm not going to date them. And I just haven't met someone yet that I connect with on that level. So therefore I'm not going to do anything with them because that doesn't feel right. Is there a me. feeling of empowerment? I do feel empowered by that. Yeah, I do, for sure. Um, not in like a super, super um, modern feminist way, but yeah, I do. I do feel empowered by that. I feel like it, um, it empowers me to make choices that are aligned with my intuition versus what is expected, um, for sure. I think everyone should be. Um, empowered by the choices that they make. But yeah, I do feel empowered. Well, by that. And it also delineates you from other women, right? So that yeah. would bring in that would bring in additional attention, correct? Attention in what way? Well, I mean, in all ways, right? I mean, most women aren't having articles written about them because of their chastity. You know what I mean? Right. So in some ways, it sets you apart in a way that would also bring in more attention, doesn't it? Did you say tension or attention? Attention. Attention. Okay, sorry. I thought you said tension. Um, attention. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I like attention. I quite enjoy it, and it's nice. It's nice that I can get attention for something that I um, just am doing as is. You know, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like being a voice for people also who live similarly to me. Um, since, I, since creating um, content around this, I've gotten so many messages from people all over the world who are living similarly to me and, and aren't as vocal about it. And I love being able to um, be a voice for those people who feel like ashamed about it because I don't think there is anything to be ashamed of when it comes to being a virgin, even if you're older. So would it, would it be fair to say then, to just to ask you directly and bluntly, would it be fair to characterize at least some of the motivation behind this as being empowerment and attention? Some of the motivation behind me being a virgin? Staying that way, yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. I think um, the attention is a nice byproduct of that, but I don't. I'm, I'm definitely not doing this for. I'm not doing this solely for attention, and I'm not going to hang on to this. For well, no, attention. no, I don't mean solely. I, I would not. You so motivations that people have are, are usually very, very complex, at least inside their own heads. Even if on the surface they don't seem complex, they're usually complex. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm just asking for a part. Is, it a, is part of this the fact that there is a tension and a feeling of empowerment that comes with, uh, with the idea of staying a secular virgin just for the sake of doing so? Um, I'll give you a part. Yeah, sure. A part of it is, okay. yes. Yeah. I'll gotcha. You. Yeah. And the reason I ask is because people have... They have characteristics uh, that define them in the world that people can point to pretty easily, right? Yeah. Um, very, very good-looking people, for instance, are usually defined by how good-looking they are. 
Very ugly people are usually defined by how ugly they are. Very quickly, it's like a judgment assessment. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Uh, people who are very wealthy are usually identified by, by their wealth, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, you'll even hear it said, you know, if, if somebody's very wealthy, a person might say, man, yeah, I know that guy, and he's super rich. They just, like, kind of throw it in as an identifier. Yeah. And so in this case, um, I just want to make sure that is, has this become really a keynote part of your identity? Uh, I think that would be a fair assessment. Yeah, at this age, I feel like it has become a part of my identity, sure. Yeah. So it's not the pursuance, really, of virtue, but the fact that pursuing this path has now become part and partial of your identity and all of the things which come with that. Is that, is that correct? That's fair, but I also feel like I'm not afraid to lose that identity in order to further this uh, attention or, you know, the positive well, aspects. Well, you can, you can see from the external position, the person who's, um, who's looking at this, you can say that. You can say, well, I'm not afraid of losing this identity, mm -hmm. um, but, ha but there's, there, it's an unfalsifiable statement, right? It's like, um, how, how, how would anybody ever know if that is correct? or incorrect, uh, they, they really wouldn't, right? We would just basically have to take your word that even though this should become part of your identity, um, that you're not trying to keep it as part of your identity specifically because um, of the, the kind of externalities which come with it, which would be things like uh, tension and empowerment and the feeling of being in control and things like that, right? Yeah, I think that's fair. Um... I guess, I honestly, with the, I feel like a lot of this stuff that I'm talking about, people really do have to take my word for it. I mean, I know uh, last time I was on the podcast, everyone thought, not everyone, obviously, but a good majority did think that I was lying. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, I don't is. think you're lying. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you're lying. I, um, yeah. So the thing is, is um, the reason I try to understand the worldview is, is because... When I, when I push in a message, I'm usually looking at the idea of the, the consequence of virtue in society. Mm -hmm. And while I'll be perfectly honest with you, and I don't see any particular virtue in you staying chaste because the motivations behind staying chaste are not virtuous, um, I, I still think that it's, it's a, interesting enough that I wanted to comment on it and discuss kind of the idea behind it, right? Yeah. No, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That's all I had, Brian. Right. All right, I have a uh, couple follow-up questions here, and then we'll get into some of more of the pre-show notes. Uh, so, Lauren, uh, you did say you've never dated anyone, very selective in what you're looking for, virgin, straight, asexual leaning, mm -hmm. but no affiliation. Well, okay. Um, you said, uh, so if the right guy came into your life, how quick would you have sex? How quick would I have sex? Uh, be a couple months, probably couple months yeah. okay maybe like two two months two months it seems like a good time okay I don't know. Oh. back underscore to underscore the underscore roots donated one thousand dollars pop champagne let's have a great show thank you man uh let's have a great show and also since i i'm here I can't be there having the champagne, and normally I'm the guy who polishes off the, you know, the bottle. So I'll yeah. make sure that I have a drink with everybody. <laughs> He's going to have a drink, so uh, yes. Nice. Appreciate it. Back to the roots. You're, you're a legend. He's a brave and a decent man. He's a pioneer. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, so Nick is getting... Give me the small one, not the big champagne bottle. If uh, if somebody sends in the second one, we'll we'll pop the we have a gigantic champagne bottle, uh, so we'll do that one. Really appreciate it, man. Thank you for the champagne pop, wow. big thousand dollars, man. You're a legend. Thank you, dude. Let's do a uh, big one. Go big. Uh, let's get cups. <laughs> Can we get? No, 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 no. Those are for me. I want the the white ones. I'm very selective about the champagne, the the cups, Likes the white the cups ones. you share with your champagne. <laughs> they get the poverty cups from from here on. No, I'm kidding. Here, Maddie, you get this going. Um, Raise your hand if you want one. Can I get a towel, please? <laughs> Are you? All right. Uh, well, I think she's the only one who's not 21, so. Fresh from those. We'll Wait, do this. I have a question back to you, Lauren. Yes, um, so, and going back, it's like really intriguing for me to hear all mm -hmm. that. And like, so question on it, like, 
it, you're going to wait two months if it does come down to that. Like, how would you know what it feels like if you've never felt like that before? And if so, what do you think it would feel like if you did come across it? Uh, I feel like it... I, I think it's just yeah, something I'll that you know. Um, I know myself I'll really well. I feel like I would just know if someone was for me in that way. Um, and... Yeah, I just I feel like just lead with that. I mean, like I said, I mean I I very like intuitive person, so I feel like across the board, like I just know if something's for me or not. I move pretty quickly. Do you ever get horny? That's what I was yeah. gonna ask. <laughs> yeah. you, I, I was wondering, do you yeah, have any? Sure. Do you have sexual thoughts? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm not like <laughs> completely like devoid of that. Um, yeah, no, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So like, is it like? When you say you do get horny, yeah, like, is it self pleasure? Yeah, or is it okay? Yeah, do you like Wait, watch videos you... and stuff? No, not really. Not really. So it's just like all in the mind. Yeah, basically. Okay, yeah. cool. Do yeah, you read imagine. books? Do you read do romantic read... No- novels? I can, can dabble with a crazy. little novel or <laughs> erotica, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so not being sexually active or not being in that area, what are some fantasies that you would say pop up into your head to make your like? So? Oh, honestly, I'm, like, super vanilla with that. I feel like I don't really have anything too crazy. I feel like literally it's basically just, like, picturing being with someone, being with someone who you are into, who's into you, who cares about you, who wants to protect you. Like, very vanilla, nothing, like, crazy at all. Very. So like, what are your standards exactly? My standards? Well, I would say the first standard is, first and foremost, again, the, the energetic connection that you would feel with someone. Um... Without that, I feel like nothing else matters. It's knowing that someone is, it's just a knowing that someone is for you. Um, and then on top of that, I would say there's other non negotiables for me as well. Um, Here, I'm, let's do a quick okay. uh, cheers. <laughs> cheers, to my water. cheers to Roots, Salud. Cheers. 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 Andrew's taking a shot. There we go. Yes, That's a double Down shot, it. by the way. <laughs> what a legend. <laughs> Um, um, so, okay, your, yes. what are your, because, um, so, so what are your standards exactly? You said energetic connection. Well, it has to be the connection first and foremost, 100%. I feel like without that, nothing else matters because you could put like the most attract, a conventionally attractive person in front of me, millionaire, and if I don't feel it with someone, I'm not going to pursue that. However, um, other non-negotiables outside of that are going to be um, wealth and status are important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Hundred percent. I would say someone who is masculine and dominant, but also can balance and temper that, um, and isn't an extreme, you know, complete macho thing happening. I would say someone who has depth to them, someone who is um, maybe more, a little bit, has at least some like spirituality. I don't want anything again too extreme, but that has to have depth to them, intelligent, um, great sense of humor, um, definitely more conservative for sure, um, has to like guns, I like guns, um, and uh, also someone who is stands up for what they believe in. Um, I won't specifically say the word, but didn't get the Okay, injection. we get it. Yeah. Well, can I, can I ask a follow-up here? I'm just curious about... Uh, because of this motivation of essentially just uh, not really having much attraction to men and things like this, l- let's assume for a second that you kind of did meet Mr. Perfect who fit all of the quality criteria that you have, right? The qualities and criteria. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the physical aspect of a relationship for men is extremely important. Do you think that he would um, would think that there's a good possibility that uh, even if you know, you, you married him and this and that, that there would be trouble in that department because of this kind of like uh, asexuality which you have? I don't think so. Um, because if I were to be in a relationship, I think you could assume that I would, wouldn't have a problem with someone. I wouldn't have a problem having sex with someone that I was dating because I would have already kind of cleared that. Like I would be, um, I wouldn't date someone that I wasn't not going to have a relationship with or a sexual relationship with. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm talking from their perspective. Do I think that they would question my that they would That they would assume that there's a good um, possibility that if you've waited this long and it was not for the sake of, like, a, a virtue, virtue-based chastity, uh, but rather through kind of, like, um, 
uh, almost a social awkwardness, if you will. And I know I'm paraphrasing this incorrectly. I'm not trying to, mm-hmm. uh, to do that or be, I'm just trying to, there's no good way for me to put it into words right, without yeah. it seeming offensive, right? But I'm not, no I'm not trying to be offensive. No worries. But based, uh, based along kind of the idea of the social awkwardness rather than the ideal of virtue, don't you think that it could be apparent to, to many men, even if they were wanting a virgin, uh, that they may want to rule you out as um, there's a good possibility that due to this, due to these kind of standards that you have and the asexuality which you present, that you may not be good for their physical needs. Does that kind of follow? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible that that would be an issue for for a man, for sure. Um, I would say, like, in terms of the asexuality thing, it's not really a label that I personally lead with. I feel like it's just not something, I used to say that I was asexual, it's just not something that I, I personally resonate with as much anymore, despite um, having the infrequent attraction. I think that's really the only thing that kind of lingers for me with the asexual label. But um, yeah, I mean, I I totally think it's fair that someone would be skeptical and um, question, you know, if I'm not doing it for virtue purposes um although i do think well and the, well the reason i say that for virtue purposes is we assume that the pleasures of the flesh are things that men and women both want and i think they are right mm-hmm. i mean i don't i don't think most of the women here would disagree with that or most of the men who are watching would disagree with that and where the virtue comes in is that you're denying yourself that pleasure right but you definitely want it and you seek it and it's definitely something that uh, that you would prefer to have if you could and so it's denying yourself of this that that is the kind of virtuous aspect of this and leads a person to value chastity as um, as as a virtue, right? That's that's kind of what the principle is. Mm-hmm. But it's just being avoided because of like due to social awkwardness and, uh, you know, what, what you would kind of say is a limited form of asexuality. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't a man almost see that as a red flag, I guess. Sure. Yeah, they totally could. I mean, I would. I would uh, debate you on the social awkwardness. I don't feel that I'm a socially awkward person. I understand that you're just trying to find the right word for it, and it's not an easy thing Well, in to this understand. department. In this department, yeah. it would be socially awkward, right? Sure, like, for instance, I... For instance, um, the men who you would ordinarily be attracted to who approach you, mm-hmm. that's going to be a socially awkward situation, right? Because you're like, well, I just don't have attraction for any men. I'm not kidding. It's not you, really. It's just that I just really don't find many men attract. That's got to be socially awkward, right? No, I hear you. I feel like I don't, I don't mean, I don't straight up say that. I would just say like, I'm not interested. I, I keep it pretty, um, low key. Um, but I, I, I mean, yeah, of course it's uncomfortable to reject someone, but I don't, I don't feel that, I don't feel that I'm awkward about it. I think, um, I have a pretty good way of doing things that aren't that way. Okay. So. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for answering my questions. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Did you finish all your standards? Did I? I don't know. Let's see. What else do we have? <laughs> a pretty long um, list. It was a pretty long one. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a lot. Um, obviously, physically attractive to me. Again, um, I kind of already mentioned mm-hmm. that with the energetic connection to me. Those things go hand in hand. Um, I said sense of humor. I said uh, loves adventures, travel. I'm a very, um, you know, physically. I, Adventures? No, physically. Like, what are your? <laughs> oh, physically, physically speaking, um, I would say tan. I'm very uh, white. Um, <laughs> I would say I like tan skin. Um, definitely on the taller side for sure. Kind of classic answer there. Um, just not. I would say like naturally good looking. Kind of like the rugged, rugged good looks. I like someone in their forties. Um, preferably a little older than me. Um, I would say like seven to 12, 13 years older than me. Oh, sorry. So, wait, hold on. Uh, seven. Build I'm 34. Man. I am 34. I would like to date someone who's like between 40, 45. Wait, Perfect. wait, wait a second. Somebody's telling me that you have an OnlyFans account. Is that correct? No, that is not correct. I do that not. That is not correct. That is not correct. I, I'm very okay. uh, anti OF. I do not have an OnlyFans account. But nice try, okay. everyone. Whoever said that, <laughs> nice try. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not making any allegations. No, no, I'm no. just saying that that this is this is being stated. So I wanted to clarify. Well, I mean, that's because to be fair, a lot of girls who have OnlyFans will claim that they're a virgin to direct, you know, the audience to their OnlyFans. So you don't have an OnlyFans. I okay. Do not so, have OnlyFans. Um, Thank you. 
you want to date a guy who's between 40 and 45? Preferably, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you wouldn't... <laughs> now, just to be clear, how stringent are these... Because you're 34, you wouldn't date a 37-year-old? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's fair. I just prefer... I like a little bit older. Just okay. Like bit older. And you said that uh, height, so how tall are you? I am 5'2". What you said you... How tall would I... Yes. Um, 5'10", to like 6'3". <laughs> It's like, it's like build a bear. Yeah, just build a, build a boyfriend. Now, you also said that, uh, I don't know if you specifically said money. Did you say money and status is very important to you? I said wealth and status, wealth. yes. Okay. Yes. When we're talking about wealth, what are we talking about here? Um, millions. Okay, so let's, let's break it down like this. So you said you date, would you date somebody between the age of 35 and 45? Yes. Okay. 35 so really this young. is, I'm assuming here that this person is not retired yet. Mm -hmm. They're still working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay. How much, what's their yearly income? Oh, man, I don't know. Um, millions. <laughs> yeah, millions, Brian. I don't know. Um, I, I honestly don't know. I don't, I'm not like. Well, I don't hold, know. hold on. But I mean, you're very selective. You have very high standards. So I think you do know. <laughs> I really, d I mean, when I said millions, I thought that was kind of. Well, he, he, his net worth is millions or he's making millions of dollars a year? Oh, that's a fair question. Um, um, I mean, preferably making millions of dollars a year. Okay. Well, now, I'd like, I'd, I'd like to point out, Brian, did you notice that inside of these preferences, she never actually mentioned the man's body count? Yeah, I'm happy to clear that up. I actually. Um, I actually don't want to, I wouldn't want to be with a virgin, personally, just not my preference. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of us has to know what we're doing, and I would kind of prefer <laughs> that, that, you know. Well, scenario. so going back to the money, though, um, <laughs> what's, yes, Brian? what is the bare minimum that a guy would have to earn to, uh, a year to date you? Oh, wow. I honestly, I haven't thought about that, to be honest. Um, well, I mean, you have thought about it. You said wealthy. Right, wealthy, but I haven't I haven't quantified it in terms of you know a number. We'll do it right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> do it right now. Alrighty. Uh, I honestly I don't know. Uh, Six figures, seven figures. Yeah, seven. You know what? Let's just say seven figures because I honestly I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say like two hundred million. I don't know. I'm just gonna say so wait, seven is, figures. Okay, so sh should we say bare minimum one million dollars a year? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Bare minimum. Sure. Okay. Yep. And then you said status is important too. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Uh, that to me means someone who is successful. Um, maybe someone who is well known in their field. Um, that's, yeah, someone who's well known probably. Mm -hmm. Who has, you know, connections. And um, that to me is status. Maybe okay. you could take a little fame. I don't know. Nothing too crazy, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for her. Yes, yeah, so I thought I thought it was an important uh, point to bring back. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. almost on my inquiry. Uh, thank you. No, I was just wondering, like, do you want children and a family? And also, do you feel that you have, like, an expiration date or year to accomplish that if that is one of your goals? That's a good question. So I actually am untraditional in the sense that I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. Um, I would do a long-term relationship, committed long-term relationship, but I don't want to be legally married to anyone. And you don't want kids. And I don't want kids. Wow. Yeah. So it's often stated on this podcast and many others um, where men investigate the various dating phenomena between men and women that women seem to not care very much about the body count of men and men seem to care very much about the body count of women. They view it very differently. But aren't you making kind of the greatest case for that in the world that here you are with a zero body count and your statement is, I don't give a shit about the body count of the man. In fact, I would prefer that he had some bodies under his belt so he knew what he was doing. Yeah, that's totally fair. Um, I do think a lot of the time when you're a virgin, people would assume that you would also want to be with another virgin. Um, I think that's a fair assumption to make. But yeah, personally, I, I don't want to be. 
Um, just, well, well, that's not really my assumption. My assumption is that if you're a man who's a virgin, you'd prefer a virgin. And if you're a man who wasn't a virgin, you'd prefer a virgin. But that if you're a female who's a virgin, you don't really fucking care. It's not it's not right. an important aspect to uh, to women whether or not men uh, are virgins or not. That would be kind of my position on that. Yeah, 100%. I definitely agree with that. I think I've kind of learned that from watching, you know, even like podcasts like this. I feel like that that does resonate with me. That does make sense. I feel like that is true for me as well. So, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, Andrew, I have a comment or a question about the body count thing. I personally, I don't care how. I I don't think it's. I think it's like crude to talk about that. I don't know why people these days like talk about that. I don't. I would because never ask uh, a guy to, that because it's extremely important when it comes to dating. 